Now, I've got a big garden, as everybody knows, and so I have the luxury of being able to go out with a wheelbarrow and scoop up molehills because Mole Hills, the little gentleman in the black velvet jacket, he's done all the hard work for you. If I'm incorporating that into a seed mix, which I quite often do, I will sterilize it. And the way I sterilize it is I stick it in the uh, in one of the Agra ovens in a big old meat tray, which I don't use for anything else. Are Leave sure? it in there. Yeah. <laughs> Never go around there for a roast. <laughs> also a bit gritty. A bit gritty. A bit gritty. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 110 of Talking Dirty. Over at East Ruston Old Vicarage, looking marvellous in mustard, we have Alan Edward Herbert Gray, our happy and very handsome horticulturalist. And over there in Cambridgeshire on this dull and grey morning, we have Thordis Maria Sophia Fredrickson, looking absolutely blooming in pink and orange. <laughs> a little overexcited. I'm going to try and take the energy levels down a little bit. A good night's sleep rare these days and our first proper podcast back before we get into things a huge thank you for all of your messages after we popped up um with our our mini episode to test things out figure out how do I edit a podcast with a baby in arms well we figured that out and here we are back with one of our favorite guests on Talking Dirty but extremely long overdue in a return visit Jimmy Edward Blake of Huntingbrook Gardens surrounded by lilies and dahlias and salvias and agastaches how the devil are you <laughs> I'm very good very good very good delighted to be back with you guys and welcome back uh, um, welcome back to you Jimmy yeah yeah so yeah. Alan looked it up when was Jimmy last on 20th of November, 2021. That's it. There's lots of wow. 20. I know. Wow. <laughs> and, wow. and basically, that time ago. since the podcast started, we've been trying to book Jimmy for this time of year when your garden is resplendent with seasonal treasures. And, you know, you're, you're kind of famous for these glorious dahlia salvia kind of combos and tropical foliage and pollard <laughs> plants with all these big beautiful leaves but you're always so so busy so I'm um, delighted that we've finally got you at the exact peak hunting brook moment <laughs> to share your it, plants it is it is peak yeah and it's it's actually quite it does not like it's it's actually a quieter time in a way in the garden because you're not doing any major big jobs um you know I, I get a little bit bored actually um deadheading and just doing things but I have to remind myself this is the peak. You have to really enjoy the colours, enjoy every moment of it. Um, and I think we all have to do that, don't we? We have to remind ourselves to to yeah. stop and enjoy yeah. it when it's we work we work a lot of the year to to to, to get to this point. And um can some of us just forget to You're enjoy so it. right, Jimmy, because I know exactly what you mean. I was deadheading dahlias the other day and I suddenly I was going out in my head because I just thought, Oh, this is just so dull. Isn't there somebody I can get to do this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then you have to switch your mind and you have to switch your mind to looking at what you're working with and then and the effects that you're using of. Yeah. Once you do that, you're right. And I think so actually this morning was so enjoyable picking them picking them and put just putting the colours together this morning was like it was such fun and it was it it was a great lesson and actually I want to go through them all afterwards when we're finished and just just make sure I'm propagating the ones that I want yeah. a lot more of next year. So sometimes that's a good idea. Go go and pick your favourite flowers in the garden and then figure out, well, do I want more of that? How do I get more of it? And and make sure that you have that flat that in process for next year. And I'm so excited for whenever I finally manage to get to Huntingbrook because your colour palette speaks to my heart. It is <laughs> absolutely the colours that I love. <laughs> Um, you know, sunset shades are plenty, everything's strong and rich. I mean, not everything, because yeah. obviously that might not work. But I, I watched a video of yours on Instagram the other day where you were sitting with some salvias and you sort of said, oh, and there are lots of these wishy-washy ones over here. Right. And I can't remember which sort of creamy, pale one. It was very pretty. But then you were with some really strong, hot pinks and reds. Yeah. And you talk a lot about Royal Bumble, which is my absolute favourite salvia. Grey one. It's a grey one. We just planted a load of them, actually. I have a... A French student just started for a few days and he planted, I don't know, maybe 30 of them yesterday, just in one one area uh, with, with lots of amaranthus coming through them. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great, Savia. For people who don't know, I'm sure 
there aren't many watching or listening who aren't aware of Huntingbrook. Very quickly, your kind of scale, the size of the garden, the areas of the garden. Um, the whole site is 20 acres. And then up around the house, I've never measured it, to be honest with you. It's probably, I don't know, three to five acres, that sort of size. Um, it's quite intensely planted. I've kind of run out of space, light space. So a lot of these plants today, except one of them, I think, or two of them, need need full sun. So a lot of editing has to be done with, with trees that I planted in wrong places. And um, <laughs> We all do it, Jimmy. <laughs> I'll do it. And they grew so much this in the last months with the rain. They just grew so much. Unbelievable. And what kind of a season have you had? Um, we, we had a really lovely start of the summer you know june and may may maybe may may and june and then it was just like you needed you needed um a rain a, a wetsuit is that what you wear into the sea for the yeah. month of july yeah it was fairly fairly horrific i was at a festival there a few weeks ago and i saw i saw a guy it was so wet at the festival he was wearing a full wetsuit for the sea and goggles and <laughs> flippers <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what you would have needed in Ireland in the month of July. It's lovely out now. It's a beautiful day today. Um, so Lovely. Well, let's dig into your show and tell because it is just bursting in every side of your screen. There are, there are plants sort of jostling for attention. So where do you want to start? I think I'll start with the dahlias because um, they're sitting here and I just bunched them beside me. Um, and just these colours, these beautiful colours. Um and I suppose they're always, you know, new data is they're always on trial, certainly to see if they're tall enough. Um, they could be beautiful and have a few incredible flowers, but the tuber doesn't um bulk up. And that's that that's quite that often happens with some of these new data. You dig them up and they have this little tiny tuber. But I know one of the best for forming big tubers really quickly, and it's a good tall orange is um Cornell bronze. Okay. Cornell bronze, it's it's a deeper orange than you're seeing there. It's got good long stems. Because you want you want your dahlia to have good long sturdy stems. You don't want a floppy dahlia. Um nothing worse than a floppy dahlia. Um so th <laughs> that is that is 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 super. That kind of one of the number one dahlias I've repeated through through the borders uh or through the main border. And then if you want to kind of tone it down a little bit, go for Sylvia. Mm. Sylvia, both long stems, uh, really good. Like that Cornell bronze, the first year when I dug it up, had massive tubers produced in a few months. So that that's that's what you're looking for. Um yeah, I love that. And I think I think what you need to do is just identify those sort of data and repeat them. Because I'm a plant collector and you can see I have like so many different dahlias, but I really have to keep editing which are the very best. Um, you know, Danique here was is an absolute stunner, and uh, that's not really coming out properly in that cup. It's all um, right. We'll we'll have a picture. You'll have a picture. Danique is like it's a it's a deep orange and deeper deeper orange in the center. Um, nearly black in the center. It is incredible. Now Danique's on trial. Because she's quite short, her legs aren't quite long, that long. I feel so, it. <laughs> <laughs> she might get the chop. Um, the the other way, I suppose, dealing with those smaller days is growing them at at at, at, at eye level. So on the wall, at uh, coming in, there's a bed that's eye level, and like copper boy, which is again, it's a really deep orange with a dark center as well but it's it's actually getting it, it didn't get the chop because i have now have it at that eye level which is which is great but just two beautiful beautiful colors deep they're much deeper than you see there um but they're short they're short so you need to you need to you need to watch that this is quite a niche observation um, but from a, a knitting point of view, I'm a, a very keen knitter. Actually, I mean, I should ask you about this glorious uh, sort of sleeveless sweater thing you're wearing, um, in, which I assume is crocheted. I mean, it's glorious. I knitted it last night. Yeah. <laughs> I crocheted it last night. But, but you're, um, all of those 
glorious tones like a dulux color chart all of these different just slightly subtle changes it really reminds me of when you have fair isle knitting and you just mm -hmm. gradually alter the tones yeah. and how gl like glorious the outcome is when you actually have all these different um kind of colors from the same tonal palette and i don't really do that in my garden because i just collect up all these different things yeah yeah I, th I think it would make a really big difference if i did it probably is one of the real key parts of the magic of the planting yeah. book yeah, and I suppose, you know, even those are orange dahlias, and there's a lot of different orange, or not a lot of different ones, the orange dahlias through that border, just that really, there's not a huge difference in the colours there, but they go well together. But, but it is nice to give them a punch then with a, with a, with a, a really vibrant colour. Uh, this one here is Ambition. Uh, ambition is super. And, you know, I always say as well, the first year of Dahlia might, might be that tall. And this, if you give it a second chance, it's amazing sometimes how much taller they can be. Like, I think with the cactus days, you don't want them too big. With any of the days, you don't want too big flower. St certainly in Ireland, or they're just going to turn into a big sponge, um, dirty sponge. <laughs> and, um, I love, I, I love ambition. And you can see when you add it in with the oranges, like they just, yeah. they just, they just pop together. So that's coming out on screen quite a, a bright purple with a darker center. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah, it is. You know, and then um, let me see now. I wrote down the name of this one. purple flame. Purple flame is that color you're seeing. Oh. Purple flame is 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 a shocking pink, I suppose, and but very dark in the center. So I'm really enjoying these colors, these these the, the, these ones with the you see with the darker centers on them. I think they're really they're really attractive. Okay, let's go to the pom pods. Uh, so this is Carnet or this is Burlesca. Oh, Burlesca is one of the favorites in the garden. It's it's good and tall, and it's gorgeous colors. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I suppose there's a very very soft creamy yellow. With the, all the petals tipped in a deep pink, it's it it is gorgeous. I saw it a few years ago, and it's a it's a it's a day. I only I'm only growing it two years now, and it's it's combined with salvia, um, curvy flora, and uh, oh, it's lovely, yeah. They're lovely together. Those those yeah. those they pick up the colors. Um, so again, like you find a good day like that, and you just repeat them, and instead of planting one in one in a in an area, plant plant five of them together so that you have a good big bunch of dahlia, uh, and repeat that five if you have space. Um, well, that lovely one to mix with it then is Downham Royal, Downham Royal, and you look at that, look at how well they go together. Oh, lovely! They're a lovely couple, aren't they? Rich, plummy, kind of purpley color, really bringing out all of yeah. those dark pink tips on each of the burlesque. Yeah, colors. so nice together. Um, and you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to be adding in like I don't think single dahlias look great with those pom pom dahlias. Do you know they just look a little bit weird, don't they? <laughs> um, so I keep, I try and keep the singles together. Yeah, I think you're right there. I agree with that. I think that um, you know if you group the types of dahlias, you jumble them all up together. I mean, one one type of dahlia will outshine the lot. But if you yeah. keep your singles separate, I mean, it's those singles. I, I always grow. Um, a, a batch of singles from self-saved seed every year, and I I keep yeah. them going for as long as I think they're good. And if I don't think they're good enough, we chuck them. But the ones yeah. that I like, you mentioned height, Jimmy, a little while ago. The ones that I really like are about, you know, six feet plus tall. And I mean, I know you've got the bother of staking, and I know you've got the, all the rest of it that goes with yeah. those. But they have presence. It has yeah. majesty about them. Yeah, especially those singles. Um, yeah. Definitely, yeah. What is this? This one is quite nice. This one is called Cornwell Island. Uh, now it's much deeper than it is in the photo there or in the video. Um, it's a deep pink with a very deep center again. And I didn't, I didn't think much of that at all last year. Like I didn't think much of Purple Fox. I mm -hmm. thought they're definitely, they're definitely going to be going into the compost. And by accident, I think they got potted up and planted out again. And both of them have performed so well. Um, Purple Fox doesn't look very exciting, but it's it's covered in flowers. It's quite tall and they're not big. So they're kind of small flowers and they're with Alstroemerias. 
But yeah, sometimes, sometimes when you give them a second chance, both of those days were much small, lower last year. And this year they're much taller, much better. And they're going to be kept now for their well-behaved. And are um, you lifting them or mulching them? What's your daily treatment plan? I'm, I'm, lift, I'm lifting them, yeah. I lift all the days, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we forget some and they generally come back. But my big, my big, I suppose my big aim is to try and get dahlias flowering early. Yeah. Um. So we pot up mid-February um, and potting up into rich compost, into big pots, not weak compost in small pots. It makes a huge difference and not letting them dry out. So they go down into the tunnel, no heat. They'll get covered with a few layers of fleece on cold nights. Um, but we give them a fertilizer when we plant them now. And I find like um, like everything is organic here in the garden that we use and we don't spray and all that. But we do use Osmocode with the dahlias and it makes a huge difference. Mm. So good. Yeah, they're, they're greedy plants, Jimmy. They're, the minute they wake up, they're hungry. Yeah. yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah, I'm same. (laughs) (laughs) I wake up during the night and I'm hungry. Um, (laughs) That's all of them anyway. That's those ones. Move them out of my way. So we just go on to some of the singles. And like really the singles, as you said, Alan, the the ones growing from seed are just just so beautiful. Yeah. Generally, they're they're better than the ones you buy. I I think. I think all those bishop ones are. are, I don't know. They just bore me. Um. But like, look at this. This is this is enormous. Like, look, th- like, it's hard to. It's the size. It's enormous. Single S- started selecting the largest flowers, so we started getting these really big singles. And this one is called Kathleen Blake. It's called after my mum, and it's about eight foot high, and it's got big, thick black stems. Doesn't fall over, and these massive flowers. They kind of hang a little bit like that. They are unbelievable. You know, Jimmy, that reminds me of a flower in a Disney film. You know, yeah. you just imagine these kids loving this huge, great dahlia towering above their heads. I think it's, it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. I mean, oh, what a sound. It's a, it's a beauty. And I'm so glad because I was hoping this year, will it be as good as it was last year? Because it's named after my mum and it's even better. So it kind of, it kind of sums my mum up. She gets better every year. <laughs> and she's amazing uh, and hopefully we'll be able to bring this into the nursing home next year and plant it I only have two plants of it but they're like they bulk up really quickly so um, that'll be um, that'll be a definitely one for her to be showing off to all her other her friends in the nursing home <laughs> another thing on seed grown dahlias I was talking to Joe Sharman at Monk Silver the other day because he just lives down the road from me and he said that I think it was Rosie Steele um, in Norfolk, had basically any fancier tuba dahlia that she bought seemed to have been killed off by the winter, but her seed grown dahlias had pulled through in the ground. So, oh and I mean, I've certainly got them um, to go back to the boring bishop. I've got bishop's children in the ground, which yeah. are the only dahlias that have survived in my garden after last winter. Um, mm-hmm. So, there's something there about there is, the hardiness yeah. of those seed grown dahlias as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they usually form good big tubers as well. I hate That's to gloat, good. but I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I was, I mean, I well, I had a guide a tour yesterday of the garden for for people that had booked on it, and um, we got to the dahlia border, and uh, I said, well, I said this to me is actually unbelievable because of these dahlias that you see here have been standing here since last year. They were just left over the winter. We didn't mulch them. I had bought in. From the fact that we had minus four here in in the winter that last year, which is um, unheard of really for East Ruston, but we did, albeit briefly, um, and I hadn't mulched them, and I thought, oh, we had minus four, I'm going to have to restock on dahlias. So I restocked on dahlias, and now we're selling all the ones that I bought because the whole the whole dahlia border, I mean, it just grew back. I mean, it's ma- marvelous. It was fantastic. And did you just decide to leave them out, or did you just? No, I think we ran out of time, Jimmy, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I would have yeah. dug them at the end of November. We got into December yeah. and started to have this cold weather. Yeah, yeah. It is amazing how they, because like, any time we forget them, they seem to come up all right. But then, you know, we leave them out one year and then all of them will die or something. Yeah. Well, I yeah. thought I'd lost my, my, my gingers, my hedicums. 
And um, there were one or two season ticket holders who take great delight in coming around. They poke about in the garden and they they were poking their rhizomes on top of the soil of my hedicums after the winter. And of course, they are all squidgy and rotten. They're saying, yow, yow, dangers are dead. <laughs> this kind of thing. But, you know, they've all come back because underneath those top rhizomes, yeah. there is another rhizome. There's another layer. Yeah, another yeah. layer. They've yeah. come back from that, which is amazing. Yeah, no, I'm leaving out the... Out the all the Hidditchians now just chant yeah. them and and um, they're doing all right as long as they're well drained, really, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Um oh. this is this is a beauty. It's page ninety-eight of the book, it's called. We never named it, so it always has the label page ninety-eight of the book. <laughs> um it's page ninety-eight in my book, the picture of the book this day. But it's a super one, really tall, fabulous one. Um well, uh, I suppose Night Butterfly, even as a single, you know, or whatever they're called. I'm so, I should have done my research, really. Um, somebody, somebody was using Night Butterfly as a replacement for a, a variety called Chimborazza. And they said to me, that uh, my, this is a bulb merchant, he said to me, oh, well, Night Butterfly is a wonderful thing. So I bought it on his recommendation and it flops. Oh. With me. I, mine's not floppy, Alan. <laughs> Jimmy, I only have your word for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, do you know what? With the with this one, give it another chance next year because I, think I will. It's it's got so many blooms on it out there at the moment, and um, yeah, it's I I think it's a really good one. So we'll like do salvias or lilies next, which is which is important. Oh. Um, well, your salvia is so your course that's um if people are watching this as soon as it comes out your course is either sort of happening or is about to happen in you know the coming yeah. day or we haven't quite worked it out but you're doing what is it a salvia it's a day a full day intensive day of salvias and dahlias on the 28th of celebration August. day celebration of dahlias and salvias <laughs> so i'm very excited and i've been doing this kind of video loads of videos through the summer on salvias yeah um and it's been so enjoyable to do it. Um, it's been so yeah. enjoyable to watch them. Yeah, good, good. No, it's it's great. Uh, again, I'm trialing them all the time. But the ones, the first ones here I'm going to talk about are the tall salvias. And again, like with the dahlias, you know, and the small flowered salvias, you know, the little microphylla type salvias, they yeah. they really, really don't like being fluttered by other plants. And that's the big thing with them. You'll do it every year. You'll put them in with other plants. They'll get cluttered, and then you forget the following year and do the same. There, but but these taller ones, that's what I'm always trying to identify. This one is called Strawberry Lake, and there's a series named after series of salvias named after lakes. Uh, Strawberry Lake is beautiful, and the flowers are well above the foliage. They last for ages, and even I like a salvia that when the flower falls off, that the bract. The bracket yeah. looks well. It looks like a flower. Um, so this is very, very deep pink and the calyx is nearly a deep orange. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for the, the lake series. Um, I first saw them in France a few years ago. And the ones that I always grow, and I learned don't prune salvia corviflora. So this use in flower until more towards September. And by accident, I didn't prune it by accident. I just didn't prune it one year, last year, and it bloomed all summer. And this year we didn't prune them again. And they flowered since the beginning of June and they've been pumping out flowers the whole summer. I love when you find that something like that by accident, kind of. I did the same with Salvia Converted Flora. I grew it, I potted the young plants up, I, I, start from beginning grey. I took my cuttings, I overwintered them, I put them out in the garden, they started flowering in, oh, I don't know, end of August, beginning of September. I potted those plants up, kept them through the winter, put them out again, they're flowering in June. Yeah, yeah. So you, if you yeah. carry that on a bit, yeah. as you say, with with them um, curvy flora, yeah. Oh, was it curvy flora? Yeah, sorry. This curvy is curvy flora. flora. So converti flora, that's interesting because that's very late flowering as well. Yeah. And um, and then like your other good tall one is is fulgens. And fulgens yeah. is better off not pruned as well. I mean, you know, you basically do cuttings and you chuck out the old plant when it gets too old and scruffy. Um, it's, it's a fabulous plant. Velvety red, deep red. 
um, just make sure, always make sure they're getting enough light. Um, and so easy from cuttings in sand, pure sand. Yeah. Uh, and this the, is and a new... Those yeah. and those sort of salvies, they will take cold weather. Not prolonged frost, but they will take cold weather. They will take cold weather. And I, 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 there was a nursery man over from Holland the other day, and he was in Falts, F-O-L-T-Z, up in the North Pond. And uh, I was so surprised the salvies he was saying he was leaving out. And he's he gets colder than we do. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's it's a lot of people lost salvias last last winter. So this is Josh, and Josh is a the most vivid red, but it's quite tall as well. It's up to about four foot. Josh is new. He's a new boy in town. Um, <laughs> he can <I> stay. Call, <laughs> he, Josh can stay. <laughs> he doesn't have to go through the trials committee. Um. Yeah, isn't that a great red? It's a super Brilliant. red. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, some of the smaller flowered ones are tall because this is ping pong, and ping pong has some involucrat in it, which which involucratas are really they're generally quite tall. You have this massive one called involucrat of Bhutan. They are hardy, though, aren't they? They are hardy. Yeah. Absolutely, they're in full flower now. Uh, if you want the tallest most spectacular salvia it's in volucrata bluton and that gives me the really big tropical effect in one of the borders but then like you know ping pong is goes up to about four heading towards five foot and there's another one called in volucrata joan isn't there which i was potting up there's, yes yeah there's joan and there's mulberry jam which yep. i had here in my hand uh yeah mulberry jam is Mulberry jam is there. It doesn't look that different there now on the screen. It's a good, because, you know, when you have a smaller space, you're looking for those salvies that are good and upright, that don't yes. have big elbows and flop all over the place. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, some of those are really good upright salvias. Um, and then we kind of, I, I don't usually mix the blues with the, with the, with the hot colours, but next year I'm going to mix Kareem's Amazing Blue. And Kareem's Amazing Blue is just, Amazing. Amazing. Really tall. It's a deeper blue than that now on the screen. It's fabulous. It's really see-through. It's about it's nearly hidden six foot and it's flowering since the beginning of June. Lovely. Kareem's amazing blue. But like if you love these colours, like I think this is purple and blue. Like this is the deepest, deepest purple. So a lot of these ones are like Amistad. And if you you can't go wrong with Amistad, it's a super plant. I forgot to pick it. You don't need all the rare ones. Amistad is a really good plant. And if you have space to repeat it in your garden, cut it to the ground in spring and it will flower all summer. Have you tried Salvia Pink Amistad? Yeah. I haven't ha tried it yet. Tell me about it. Oh, it's a, it's, it's, it's a bit of a bore. It's a, it's a wishy-washy pink and it, it's not doing much. It doesn't look happy. Now, I've done cuttings and the cuttings, the new plants look, better so i might give it another chance that yeah. maybe it was just that old the older plant it's it's yeah it's, it's quite boring i think yeah <laughs> well it's not to uh, hear yeah yeah um and i love patton's guanahaco ah. that's deeper blue as well like that is just amazing so patton's guanahaco is is the biggest of the blues it's, but deep, it's, like, deep. it's like salvia patents on steroids isn't it it's on steroids, yeah. Like Billy the Dashed, he's on steroids at the moment for a sore paw. Oh. Um, <laughs> and he was so active yesterday because I gave him the wrong dosage. I gave him two days in one. <laughs> and he was literally, I think he dug to New Zealand yesterday. <laughs> um, for that. So I grew this from seed and got this colour. This, this is actually a lilac colour. Mm. Um, and it's a really nice color. It's not a light blue. It's more, it is definitely more a lilac. Uh, but just interesting to grow salvias from seed, save yeah. the seed, sow them in spring. They're really good. What's your name? Oh, Amino. Amino is deep, deep blue. Another gorgeous one. And obviously a lot of these are in your garden. I remember from some of your videos, you just said some of them like Blue Note might do better in a pot. You know that they they're yeah. not necessarily cut out as garden plants, but they're great as a container specimen. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely blue note. Just get swallowed up in the garden. Um, you know, I think in the borders, you know, a lovely one, Macris, very deep wine, M A K R I S. Lovely. But I think if you're going any way small with salvia, it's definitely in pots. Um, yeah, Blue Note's a real good one in a pot. Hey! hey. Oh, morning. look at that! Ooh, <laughs> ooh. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm really excited. You're our first proper one. Like we, oh, we the one, first one. We had the two of us with the baby on my lap, but the baby's now in there with his daddy, actually being really good in his high chair, which is impressive. <laughs> and rare so there'll probably be a scream at some point when he decides no i don't want to be in my high chair uh but yeah i'm i'm like i'm back you're back in action and i actually had quite a good sleep last night as well so <laughs> like for the first like, time in, in weeks <laughs> <laughs> don't know what to do with myself i've got energy it's amazing <laughs> Keep it from the top and hope the baby doesn't do too much screaming hmm well, it'll be funny. It'll go for the bloopers, won't it, if he does? Um, a little hand on the screen. Is that, oh, is that me? No, no. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, look at your dog. <laughs> Daddy's gone out. It's bad news. Billy, Billy's, <laughs> Billy's back in from his rabbit early morning rabbit hunting. Um, 